Hey guys, how's it going? So I thought I'd do a little video on the new G-Shock because this is kind of a, a big release for, uh, for Casio. Uh, this is the GBX 101ER. Uh, and as you can tell, it's a bit of a, um, bit of a kind of a leap. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a evolution from the, uh, the squares. They're not making any, um, any bones about that. It's, I don't believe it's going to replace the line, but it's certainly, um, you know, where things are headed. Um, first impressions, the new display, this, I think they call it a MIP memory in pixel display or something. Uh, it really is, it really punches. It really, really does punch. It's very, very clear under most lights uh, and it is a very different viewing experience to the standard um, LCD. I'll show you a couple of like clear side by sides uh, with that in a bit. But overall, let's just quickly talk about the um, uh, the design. So clearly, 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 they have taken a lot out of the um, the standard uh, square, the 80s square, and they've kind of updated it. This is the the GWM 5610, uh, the 1ER, which is the standard one. That's the the solar one with the um, uh, the Atomic clock and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that one, by the way, is the uh, the GA twenty one hundred. Those things are like absolute rocking horse poo at the moment. You really can't uh, can't get the hold of the black one for love and money. Uh, anyway, getting back to this one. So clearly, the design has come from that. So for me, it it really feels like a nineties watch. And I know I sound I know it sounds a bit odd because this is like a brand new watch out you know it's only been out like a week or so or maybe a bit longer in japan but in the uk you know there you haven't been able to get hold of them until now basically um but it has a bit of a 90s feel but i quite like that in a weird kind of way um it's it's certainly not subtle like this uh, the shiny bezel the sort of protective metal bezel here i believe it's just like a little metal uh, cover with its sort of um you know it's like lined effect going on here. So it really sort of catches the light. Uh, that is not subtle on your wrist. I mean, this is probably the most subtle out of the three. They've brought out three so far, three different colors. That is, uh, there's the sort of bluey green teal one, uh, which does look, look quite nice. And there's the white and black one, which has the, uh, the white, white button and white um, strap with the black surround. And then this one, which is the black one, which is the most kind of like basic one. I was quite happy to go with the, the most basic one because it kind of, it goes with more different, um, you know, more doesn't clash colors and things like that. And it's a little bit more subtle. So I, I kind of like black watches anyway. So that's that's what I went for. So, yeah, so for me, uh, obviously, you know, this so, uh, design, this kind of sort of style is entirely subjective. So it's not necessarily that useful me talking about it. But I've been wearing it for, uh, you know, two or three days now. And, you know, just kind of give you my impressions because things are different. Once you've been wearing them for a couple of days, they do they take on a different feel. You start to sort of like get past the new factor and you start to sort of really sort of understand the watch a little bit better. Um, and yeah, it does kind of look like a nineties a kind of watch, but like I said, in, in a sort of a, in a good way. I mean, what I mean by that is if you look at the font that they're using on the actual, uh, you know, around here, obviously it's all you know reminiscent of the original G-Shock font. Um, and the actual font that's embedded into the uh, the screen, you know, with all the the actual information, we've got our tide functions, our moon functions, uh, and then we've got various different things for your step meter and things like that. But overall, just in terms of the design, it definitely has a kind of a, a sort of a 90s feel. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's hard for me to get past that, really. Like, you can imagine a 90s Lamborghini having some of these kind of angles and, and things like that, or maybe even like a late 80s one, an early 90s one. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the, the, the design feel, I like it, but it, it, it kind of feels like a new dated watch in a, in a really weird way. Uh, but I do like it, but it's certainly not, it's not going to be for everyone. That's obvious, like all these kind of things, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a utility watch. So you're going to, you're going to buy, the people that are buying these are going to be people that want something that's hard wearing and does the job. Now, this is the, the G Lied um G L I D glide uh, version which is basically a surfer's watch which is actually very good for me because i get in the ocean a lot i live by the ocean uh and i actually need to know the tide 
like uh, you know that is there's even bridges near me uh just down the road where if i don't know what the tide is i either can or cannot use the um uh, use the bridge so having decent tide features on your watch is actually super super useful for me and obviously for surfers and kite surfers and wind surfers and anybody that uses the water uh, but yeah definitely for me this is this this watch is really going to float my boat in terms of functionality so let's just cycle through a few of the functions let me bring in the camera in a bit closer um, and I'll go through some of the functions and we'll just talk about it a little bit further about what it actually can do this won't be like a full breakdown of everything it can do with all the app and everything uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's just a, t a taster video, really, just to give you an idea of my feelings on the watch. But let's bring the camera in a bit closer and then go from there. OK, so we're in a bit closer now. So let's do, do a quick comparison to a standard LCD, just so you get an idea of how much these new um, screens pop. So just a sort of crude one, just to compare a sort of angle of view and things like that. But yeah, it really does pop. Certainly it's sort of a, you know, you can sort of pick it up from a distance quite, quite easily. It really is not a bad little screen on these things. So let's, uh, let's go through some of the functions. I won't do a full sort of uh, phone app and Bluetooth, uh, a full breakdown because to be quite honest with you, it would just take too long and the video would become rather lengthy and it gets to get on to be like a you know 40 50 minute uh, video at that point so let's just run through the, the functions as quickly quickly as i can uh, without going too deep into it so first of all our like button is now bottom here center which is actually quite nice i actually prefer my lights being up there than you know standard g-shocks we have it uh, up here but yeah, I know there's a few different G-Shocks that have it down here now nowadays. And yeah, I have to say that is an improvement. It's sort of easier to, you know, when you're fumbling in the dark, it's, it's much easier to find that nice large button there than these ones there. Again, talking about the buttons though, the buttons are now quite a lot sort of larger, the push buttons than these old metal pushers on the uh, old squares. So again, that's an improvement. So the tactile feel of the buttons and all that kind of thing. Uh, is, an, is a is a bonus. All right, let's run through some of the functions. So now we've obviously got a button uh, freed up because we've got four or five buttons rather than four. But there, it's, the layout is pretty much the same as the previous uh, G-Shock squares. It's got mode, display, start and lap here. Um, let's cycle through our display options first. So this is our standard time display in terms of this is the, the clearest one that, that functions just as a watch. Obviously, day date, I've uh, got Bluetooth icon up there, uh, DST for daylight savings, P for PM, time, nice and clear, Wednesday the day, and I've got uh, the uh, little vibe, VIB for the vibration um, icon at the bottom there. That's just telling me that I've got the vibration turned on. So when I get notifications or alarms or whatever, it vibrates. Um, then let's cycle through our tide and moon and all that stuff first. So bottom right here, if we press that one, Get out of it here. I've got a watch getting jealous, trying to get in the act. Um, this cycles through various different tide features. So first of all, is a sort of combo screen. So we get the time down the bottom, tide down the middle there. That little dial on the right there, that's that's an L for large, for large tide. So the, you know, the, there's quite a big difference between the big and the small. Then we have uh, sun up and sun down. Uh, and we have the tide size uh, just here. And then also at the very top, it tells me what area my my tide is synced up to which is st ives which is roughly my nearest beach basically and then if we go into this one which is just tide so we have um, again the, the time at the bottom there then we have the double 24 hour tide and we can see that the tides on the drop there that sort of one bar that is solid is the one where we are basically so we can see that we're just past our second tide and we're on the on the drop and then we get um yeah the actual the physical height of the largest tide and the smallest tide and then the time of high tide and the time of low tide basically so for me personally i live by the sea i kite surf i get in the ocean a lot and also there's even like bridges near me where i can't cross unless the tide is at a certain um you know unless the tide's sort of mid to low and things like that so for me this tide this extra kind of tide functionality is actually really really good and really useful I know it's not going to be for everyone, but at the end of the day, this is a, a watch that's designed for kind of surfers and water activity. And for most of us who get in the water a lot, 
this information is really, really useful. So it's nice that it's also clear and, you know, there's a few different ways to display it. And then if we cycle through the next one, we go into our, basically it's just sun up, sun down, so sunrise, sunset. And then we also have a quite a nice large display for the moon age or the moon phase. So as we can see, we just sort of come past a very slight crescent and the moon's uh, filling up. I'm no, you know, I'm no moon expert, so I, I'm not too bothered by that stuff. Uh, I do go, I do shoot a little bit of astrophotography, so but I, I would use something a bit more sophisticated than a watch to tell me about the moon for that. But it's still quite nice that it's got it got on there. But certainly as a photographer, and uh, you know, videographer, having a nice clear uh, sun up and sun down is actually a really big bonus. So again, that's features that I will use, and it's easy to cycle through them right here. And then when we press it again, we go back to our sort of mixed screen. So that's all of those tide and. Uh, moon phase screens and that you cycle through that with that one now let's cycle through the other display modes top left here if we press it once we get back to our, our basic you know tell the time screen press it again now we'll go into our our step counter so our activity stuff basically so this has got a step counter in it uh this as you can tell i've done 12,233 steps today which is about twice as much as yesterday uh, so that's your daily. If you press it again, you go into a monthly one. Obviously, I've not had the watch very long, so there's nothing nothing to read there. And then if we press it again, we go into our time zone one. So if you if you travel a lot, it's quite nice that you can have your local time and then your destination time at the top. I've got LA at the top there and then London down at the bottom. So nice and clear. Press it again and we go back to our standard uh, display, which is, you know, day, date, seconds, day of the, day of the week, time down the middle and DST and Bluetooth icon on there at the moment. But obviously lots of space for other icons when you have them for alarms and timers and whatever else you've got running. OK, so that's all of the display options between those two buttons there. Uh, let's go through the modes now. So first of all, first one we come to is timer. So that's, it's kind of exactly as you'd expect with like, you know, standard G-Shop. You start up here, stop and then reset there and then you know that's it and obviously you go into the, the mode you can either set the time through the watch or you can set it through your phone um, I won't go into all of the phone sort of functionality but let's just skim through the basic functions stopwatch same as usual start up there stop down there the only thing I would say I do miss having one hundredths of a second which you know you kind of get used to um, having 100 of the seconds with the stopwatch whereas obviously you don't on the new one it's just seconds minutes and hours clearly not many people use the hundredth of a second um but i won't lie i do sort of miss that you kind of it's just always been part of a uh, stopwatch uh functionality is hundred of the second and now we don't have it anyway very slight gripe but that's a stopwatch and then we go into activity. This is your saved activities, uh, which I'll show you how to program in a minute. So it just gives you a little basic thing. I was just testing it. Obviously, there's no distance there or no uh, no pace or anything because it was just a couple of quick tests. But that's where that information would be. And then you press it again. You go into notifications. So obviously, Bluetooth functionality connects to your phone. Any notifications that you get on your phone that you want it to push through, um, like I get doorbell rings, I get um, text messages, I get messenger messages, I get emails. Uh, and you can even have like, you know, YouTube notifications for like videos you want to see or anything you, you'd, you'd expect. Obviously, it's a very small amount of re screen real estate here. So you probably don't want to be doing like reading long emails on this little screen. Uh, but it's just nice to have have it there. And the, the main function I find from it is that if my phone isn't next to me, I'll just I'll, I've got this set up so it vibrates. So I'll just get a little buzz on my wrist, which which basically tells me go and check your phone because there's something to see basically. So I don't I don't tend to use this, but I'll show you how you use it though. If we go into it with this top uh, right button, then we can now these two buttons change their function and they function as up and down basically. So you can cycle through various different things. You can see I've got phone calls, messages. Let's just go into this one message so you get an idea. And it's just my mate saying, yeah, OK, thanks. So you can sort of like read a basic text message message on there. OK. And then we use this one here to come back out and we can go back out again. And then we're in our basic sort of notification screen. So that's the final uh, mode. And then press it again and we cycle back to our clock face. So that's the majority of the functionality. So anyway, so that's your main modes. And then if you want to get into sort of the, the full settings and to do sort of 
nitty gritty of stuff, we hold the top left button and then we get another whole new uh, menu. So we have like, we can set our home time, uh, time adjust for, you know, if you want to manually adjust your time or tell it to set it from the watch. Excuse that train noise that just went past. World time, so set, setting your world destination. Uh, alarm, obviously setting your alarms. Tide and moon, so you can set which, you know whatever your location is for your tide and moon. Again, I, I've done all this on my phone through the app. I haven't done it through the, the watch, but you can obviously do it through the watch if you don't have uh, an app or you, don't, you, know, you might not even have a, sm a smartphone, who knows. Uh, profile, so that's when you put in your information about your weight and height and stuff for the activity stuff. Uh, whether you want your beep on, your light, I think we can let's just go into that one again. So you can have auto light on or off, and also I think you can choose between, is it 1.5? Yeah, 1.5 seconds and a three second um, light. So let's select three seconds like that. Sometimes takes a little couple of seconds when you're changing settings to, to save it. And then we'll come back out of that and then cycle through. Vibration on or off, pairing, so that's when you're, you're syncing it to your phone basically. Airplane mode, if you need that, so the Bluetooth um, doesn't go on. Uh, phone, phone finder, so you can phone your, find your phone with the watch, as long as you're, with, you're within Bluetooth range and you have synced it to the watch already, sorry, to your phone already, then that will sync it um, up and you'll be able to make it ring. Uh, unit, so that's whether you want it in you know feet or centimeters or whatever for all, all, the, all the different readouts for the you know weights and uh, measurements. And then reset all, and then regula regulatory is just yeah data that it will give you, and then you're back to the start. So there we go. So if you press back out again, we'll come back to the start. So there you go. That gives you a pretty good sort of overview of everything that it does. The only thing I will show you now, uh, in terms of functionality, is the activity logging. Now this is where I'd, I'd probably put my first major criticism with the the watch's functionality is in this and i'll show you for why so now we're just in a standard sort of watch mode if you want to log a new activity like a run or something like that i haven't done this much so excuse me if i'm i don't know all the ins and outs about it but i'll just show you my issue that i've come across so far if we press it once it brings up uh you know are you i'm ready to log a new activity screen then if we press it again you get a big play symbol and it starts to record an activity. So obviously it's got an accelerometer in here, so it's going to record your, you know, your your arm moving for your run. It's also synced up to your phone for the GPS, so it's also going to know your, your positioning and your distance traveled. So it does have some pretty good functionality in there. But my criticism is, and I'll show you why, let's say that we've just done a 24 second uh, run. Press this button up here again to stop. And then we get the option to delete it, to save it, or to resume. So this is when it actually logs the activity to, you know, so you can refer back to it. Let's say we're just going to go into delete. So we'll scroll down to delete, and we'll choose it again. Now let's um, let's just uh, time it for us. Oh, it's just there we go. We'll time it on the old watch. So get ready. I'll try and press these uh, at the same time. So we're going to press that one there and that one there. And as you can see, we're going to, it's saying, please wait. And let's time how long we have to wait. And all I'm doing is deleting an activity that I don't want to save. So that should not take very long. Oh, there you go. That was about 11 seconds. I went slightly over because I was talking, um, but that was about 11 or 12 seconds. So that doesn't sound like, a you know, that's a, I guess that's a minor niggle, but I think in this day and age waiting 11 or 12 seconds for a watch to do a single action. I know I know it's because it's saving. I, I, I get that it's slightly more complicated than, you know, just doing a timer or setting an alarm or something like that. The activity logging is a little bit more, um, you know, data heavy, but I do find that slightly annoying, especially as I've done quite a few times, is I've pressed this top right button just by accident when I'm going through the menus or something and I forget, um, you know, I forget what it does. And then it automatically goes into that act activity log. And then I have to wait 11 or 12 seconds just to get back out. So even if I don't want to use it, I have to then get back out of it again. And I'm sort of stuck in there for 11 or 12 seconds. So that's for that top top uh, right button there for the activity logging. So for me, that is my only really major criticism, I would say, of the functionality. And it's possible they'll bring a, a, you know, a firmware update or something um, that fixes that. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe it's just a limitation of it. Um, and I don't think it's anything to do with my Bluetooth 
you know, the distance from my phone or anything. So I've done it with the phone right next to it. So I don't think it's that. I think it's just how it is. It just has a it just has a bit of a brain fart when you try to save activities. Now, personally, for me, I'm going to be using the tide features and I'll be using it as a watch a lot. And I, I tend to use timers quite a bit for like, you know, putting pizzas in the oven and things like that. Um, but I don't tend to use my watch as an activity meter. You know, I'd use like Strava or something on my phone, something that's a little bit more sophisticated and something I can share with my friends and, and all the rest of it. Um, so for me personally, that isn't going to be an annoyance. But if you are buying this watch to do lots of activity logging, uh, which some people might be, then perhaps that will annoy you. That sort of like that bit of lag, that bit of a slowdown in the functionality. Um, like I said, you know, 10, 11 seconds, it's hardly the end of the world. But in this day and age of, of everything working, as soon as you tap it on your phone, you kind of get used to things being immediate and the tech on this just, or maybe the, the software, it just isn't quite there yet. So there you go. That's a little look at the functionality. I, like I said, it's not a, a thing that bothers me too much because for me, the stuff that I use this for most is going to be the tide for when I go for a surf or a kite surf or you know crossing bridges or what have you. I'll be using that a lot. Um, I love how super super clear this display is. It really is very clear. The design overall, I I'm still not sure about. I like it. It's comfortable to wear. I'm finding it to be slightly beefier and chunkier than a standard G-Shock, and my wrists are not massive. So, it, but it's not a big watch though, and it's not a heavy watch. It is slightly heavier. In fact, let's quickly test that. It is slightly heavier than a standard G-Shock. I haven't actually measured it yet, but there you go. That's a standard G-Shock, which is coming at 49 grams. Let's try the new one, which you can't see, but there you go. 65. So yeah, it's about sort of a you know a third or a quarter heavier. Out of interest, we'll put the 2100 on there. So this at the moment is about the lightest G-Shock they do because this is the new carbon core. So um, so yeah, that gives you an idea. It's definitely a bit heavier, but it doesn't come across as heavy. There you go. I just got a new uh, notification there. That was handy. So you can see what that looks like. Strava new follower. Somebody's following me on Strava. Whoop whoop de doo. Anyway, so that's what that looks like, and that just stays up on the screen for a few seconds. And I think it will go if I just press the button. Yeah, there you go. Um, and yeah, I mean, apart from that, it's not a huge difference from a standard G Shock. I mean, as you can tell, the case back is, apart from the, the, the fact it's kind of rounded, very similar size and very similar kind of um, dimensions to a standard square. Uh, the strap feels slightly softer and thinner to me. Um, from my money and then we've got this whole sort of double um, double kind of clasp thing going on um, I also find the strap slightly long but then I do have a smaller than average wrist I'm on sort of the, the about the fifth hole uh, and then I have quite a lot of strap hanging out I'll show you what that looks like uh, here um, but either way, it's very comfortable and I don't have any problems. It kind of rides a little bit high off the wrist, but I do like the fact it is quite light and quite pliable. And I like to, I sometimes like to undo it, uh, like one knot hole as it were, and have it slightly loose. And because it is light and sort of pliant, you can wear it quite loose and it doesn't sort of flop around. And then it's super comfortable and you don't get those sort of little marks in your, in your wrist or what have you. Uh, in terms of the measurements, so I measured it at 15, um, sorry yeah 15 millimeters and essentially the overall dimensions is a bit difficult to choose your your lug distance here because you have all this sort of bolt on stuff but i measured it from here to here and i measured it at 45 millimeters and it's 45 millimeters that way so it is reasonably big um it's definitely quite a bit taller than the standard square but you know there's not a huge huge difference in it certainly for beefier guys this would actually suit better than these because these are actually relatively small uh, and then if you look at the actual bezel measurements again it's sort of it's taller than the old square uh, and i'm measuring this at a 39 on the bezel by 35 uh, millimeters so that should give you uh, some idea of sizing let's just put it next to the 2100 there and the old square just so you get a good idea of sort of the size difference. Like I say, it does tend to ride a little bit higher on the wrist, 
than some of the other G-Shocks. Um, but overall, yeah, comfortable. I, I have zero problem with the comfortability. Uh, like I said, it's it is slightly heavier than the older ones, but not by much. And you certainly don't notice it still feels like a light watch. Like it was actually a lot. It was smaller and lighter than I expected when I got it out of the box. Um, by the way, the box that you get is a standard G-Shock box, standard um, tin. So absolutely nothing sort of exciting there to unwrap. But the completely bog standard G-Shock tin and bog standard stuff. So you don't get anything new and exciting in the box in case you're wondering. Anyway, there you go, guys. I hope that was uh, useful. Um, like I said, I haven't done a full breakdown. I will quickly get my phone out for you just so you get a very, very, very quick look at the app. really don't want to go too far into this. I've tried it with various different ones, but the main one it's going to be working with is the Move. Uh, and then obviously you get your activity logging uh, and then you can go into all your different watch settings. You know, you can uh, check your check it synced up to GPS, you know, choose different parameters on the time display, you know, your light options, your that's where you can set your tie graph by choosing your destination, all that kind of stuff. So there's a fair amount to all of this in terms of all the activity and stuff. I won't go through all of it now because it's going to make the video an extra half an hour longer. I just really wanted to give you my, my first impressions after wearing this watch for a uh, sort of two and a half days now and sort of getting to, getting to know it. And yeah, I do like it. And it's 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 like I said, it's it, it's hard to know whether it's going to stand the test of time design wise like the original squares have done because the original squares it's amazing that these things are still as popular as they are. You have to remember this was like made in like eight, was it 86, I think, 86, the first one. And this one here is very, very similar to the original original. So they haven't changed it much at all. Whereas this is, uh, you know, it's a bit of an evolution, isn't it? A bit of an evolution from the old one. Um, should they have gone further with it? Should they have sticked more to the original? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I enjoy wearing it. I'm just, um, I'm still not 100% sold on the design, but I guess it's just because it's new. You kind of need to live with them for a while before, you know, things become sort of, they, they gel. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have to say though, the 2100, I looked, at, as soon as I saw this, I thought, oh yeah, the proportions are nice, everything's kind of right. Whereas with this one, I think because it's, because this, the bezel is so shiny, it's all you really see. When you look at it from a distance, you just see this great big, you see a black watch with a big shiny bezel, which can either look tacky or it can look robust, I guess, depending on how you uh, you perceive it. Um, it feels solid. It doesn't feel tacky. But yeah, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to stop talking about the looks of it. I'm just going to say that I'm undecided. I don't dislike it. It does feel like something from the from the 90s, but it also feels brand new. That's the best I can do in terms of my, my my feeling on the design, uh, but I do like the watch and it's super, super practical. Very, very, it's a very good utility watch, obviously tough. You've got your standard 200 meters, you've got standard sort of G-Shock toughness. Um, whether this is gonna get scratched up and scuffed up having this metal bezel, probably, but I guess that's just part of the G-Shock um, experience really, isn't it? They tend to get a bit, bit beaten up and tough, but yeah, this new screen technology is a big improvement. So if you just want something that's super, super legible and a great all round, you know, watch for the beach and all the rest of it, all the tide feature functionality and features, this is great. Anyway, I'm going to start repeating myself. So I'll leave it there, guys. I hope that is useful and peace out. And yeah, any questions, pop them down below and I shall try to answer them. Cheers.